The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 24th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877 927 6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can send me an email. Send that one off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger Stand, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a sea of red out there. The only uh, sector inside the S&P 500 to the upside is the energy sector. You got uh, lights we crude up 44 pennies and the XLE up 39 cents. Otherwise, everything is a sea of red. The Dow down 240, seven tenths of a cent, and generated an A to B equal CD to the downside is what looks like to Stevie. The S&P is off 35 points, nine tenths of a cent, one percent for the Nasdaq 100, 135 which in the process of testing its first key level of support inside the NQ. The Russell 2000 off 23 points, 1 to 3 tenths. Semis down 2 and a half, 79 bucks to the downside. Trannies off about 1 and a half percent, nearly 200 points there. Gold's off 4 bucks. Silver's down 9 cents. Lights recruited up 44. Pennies, natural gas up 4 cents. The 30 treasury is down 3 ticks. So the only flight to quality out here is that U.S. dollar index. Up at least 300 ticks right now, 103.68 and breaking out. When I say breaking out, let's go, in fact, take a look at the U.S. dollar index charts out here. Let's pull those. Oh, what did Stevie do? I closed those down. Oh, because I was getting ready for travel. That's what it is. So let's see. Let's uh, try to find this file out here. It won't take me too long, although I've got a bunch of them. But give me a second here. We want to go take a look at where is the U.S. dollar headed to. So I'm going to pull up my uh, set of charts that will help us do that daily, weekly, monthly. Here we go. So this will populate here momentarily, and we'll have the U.S. dollar index, which is uh, taking out a daily TD9 count top. Uh, that will occur today uh, with a, a close above 103.49. So now, just waiting for the profiles here to fill in, and uh, you can see we're above the top of a daily profile. We should be now above the center of a weekly profile, is my recollection. Why isn't it showing up? Um, let me just make sure I've got it turned on. That would be the first thing. I do. Uh, there we go. Well, I, I, I am incorrect. It is now above the top of the weekly profile. So we're above the top of the daily, taking out a TD9. We're above the top of the weekly profile. Oh, here it is. It's the monthly profile I was thinking about. So the next resistance level we're watching for the U.S. dollar is going to be 104.05. If price can close above that, what the U.S. dollar index would be telling you and I is that it, over time that it wants to get up to 114.06. So again, for the U.S. dollar, next stop should be at the 104 basically zero zero level we'll just call it that you get above 104 and it's off to the races for that u.s dollar index so whatever stories you read about people and that the u.s dollar index is you know getting you know crushed and all those types of things out there well shoot i'm heading to egypt come saturday and, and in the last eight months the uh u.s dollar has gotten so strong or that currency's gotten so weak it's a it's 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 a bargain i mean it's a bargain over there. I'm staying at the Four Seasons. We're not even paying 400 bucks a night 
for for not your cheap room there. It's a it, it is a bargain. In any event, out here, yeah, the U.S. dollar index is is not uh, dead uh, whatsoever. Uh, here, if we take a look at what's going on now in the equity future contracts, we take a look at the daily time frames just to kind of get us a feel for where support might be. Well, when we take a look at the ES mini, this yesterday completed that nice bearish engulfing candle. That thing completed a one to one point two seven two A to B equals CD pattern, and now we have price inside its profile. So the next area of support, you can see prices right now at an area of support, and that area of support is the top of the weekly, which is at 42.0. Oh, I take that back. It's at the at the center of the weekly at 41.13. So at the center of the weekly and the center of the daily, they're wedged between 41.05 and 41.14 is what we'll call it. Watch those areas. If that gives way, and we'll take a look at the intraday charts to see if there's any kind of a bottoming signal out here. So we're at one level of support. If this area fails then we're back at 4076 the bottom of that bullish structured daily profile and if that fails we're back towards the bottom of the bullish structured weekly profile 4051 and heavens to betsy if we close below that well if we close below that that would tell stevie that we likely have a two-month correction that would be uh, taking uh, place out there. And we'll take a look at those charts to try to figure that out. On the left-hand side, you've got the Dow Equity Future Contract. Now, price is trading below 33.004. Why is that important? Well, 33.004 is the swing point, the swing point from the trading session of May 4. So here we did, you can see the retracement was about a 0.618. It was 62.55 to be exact. So it works with regard to the A to B equals CD patterns out here. And now, if you close below that 33.004, the one-to-one -one A to B price projection level would be 32.495. In the case of the Russell 2000, it is attempting to form a new daily profile today. That new daily profile has support at 17.56.50. The center is at 17.73.30, and the top is at 17.98.50. Watch 17.56.50. Those are areas to watch. Now, let's switch over and take a look at my other set of daily charts for the four equity future contracts. Here, we'll get a feel for where we're at with regard to the oscillator and change lines and any other important piece of information. So with regard to the ES Mini, nothing more to add than what we already took a look at with regard to support areas. In the case of the NQ, you can see yesterday confirmed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Price is testing the top of that profile. We know that if that area um, fails, and that area being 13.570 to be exact, then we're going to look at a move to 13.505. Below 13.505, we're looking at 13.375. And below that, it would be the TD9 count breakout level of 13.055.70. We've already discussed the Dow Equity Future contract. So nothing really for me to add to that. In the case of the Russell 2000, it is uh, pulling back to its oscillator and change line. That number specifically, we know we've got that new profile. It doesn't show up on my white background charts because I'm using my advanced Doppler tool on those black background charts. So we won't have confirmation of that profile until this evening. But there is another level of support. And that is at that oscillator and change line. And that is printed at 1764. So you got 1764 there. 1756.50 has that new profile low. You close below that, we're headed lower inside the Russell 2000. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily time frame charts. Let's dive down real quickly and see what's going on on those intraday charts. And we'll start here with the NQ. With regard to the NQ, we do have a TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute time frame chart. That makes the uh, price point level that's very key to watch at 13,570.25. You close below that, we're headed lower. I see on the 240, we also have a TD9 count pattern. It looks like this will complete, and that would be at 2 p.m. today. See Roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the NQ right now. We can see the, the only two bottom – well, I take that back. The bottom signals that we see out here on the 30-minute time frame chart, you've got that TD9 count bottom. Now, what price should do is make its way up to 13,618. 13,618 is the oscillator and change line. The price can, we can see how it's really been acting for the most part as resistance uh, really since about 7 o'clock this morning. Uh, so that's going to be a key level. If price can close above that, then we're looking at a move likely to 13,695 or 13,720. No bottom signal on the 15. Roads momentum indicator signal on the 10. The price can clear the oscillator and change line. That would confirm that the 30 minute wants to get to 13,617. And then the only other topping pattern is the TD9 count pattern out here on the 240-minute chart. Now, what this would suggest to me, bar number nine will complete at two, and then at the close, we'll get uh, the uh, bar following bar number nine. So going into this evening's close, let's assume that the NQ is going to continue to move lower out here throughout the uh, day. Get a little bit of an intraday bounce right now, but then it resumes itself uh, to the uh, downside out here. So this could then extend itself into at least bar number nine or even the bar following nine, meaning that you couldn't, maybe it might not be till about 10 o'clock at night after Asia comes on board that you could get that bottom signal. And that bottom signal uh, that you would be looking for for would be if we do get a one-day rate of change above plus 10%. So Mr. Bill inside the Tigers then asked me if I would go over that, and the answer is I will. So let's switch over to that set of charts, or really it's just one chart out here, and I'll explain the uh, setup, and then we'll kind of move back. Actually, let me let me explain, really. So the setup would be when you get over a uh, over a over a 10% one-day rate of change out there. Then my, my experience is the best way to find those bottoming patterns is go to the 30 minute time frame charts, create four 30 minute time frame charts, or at least three, the ES, the NQ, and the, uh, and the YM out there, the Dow equity future contract. What you're looking for is for confirmed bottoming signals on all three. If you get that, then you get what comes next. What comes next is if we get a one day rate of change about plus 10%, uh, why is it taking that? That's weird. Ooh. Okay, we have a technical glitch. 
Let's see if we can get rid of that technical glitch. Well, let me change my windows. Oh, we got a problem here. Stevie's got a problem in Discord. Um, let's try this again. Okay, here we go. So now you should see this chart here. So the bottom panel of the chart, you'll see the plus 10 and the minus 10% level. Those are showing the one-day rates of change. Above that is the actual spot volatility. That's 50-day exponential moving average. And then above that is the actual cash chart for the S&P 500. And the blue arrows represent days when the spot volatility has a one-day rate of change greater than 10%. Historically, the pattern says that within 48 hours, you're going to get a bouncer bottom pattern out here. The last time that we saw this uh, signal, this came in on the trading day of April the 25th. It was the following day we saw just a slightly lower close and then we saw a rally. It's typically what happens. It's not a guarantee of what happens. It will at least typically stall the rally out there. And at least in the overnight session, you will see some type of bounce. But you don't get that until you actually see the bottom signals and the bottom patterns. And that's what you want to do. And I found my experience over the past when you get all four or at least three of the four 30-minute charts to uh, – um, to uh, be generating the same type of signal. Well, it gives you the highest probability. It's a great probability out there versus right now, as an example, here we're taking a look at a 30 minute, well, we weren't, I'm gonna switch panels. We were looking at the 30 minute chart for the NQ. And so now I'll go take a look at the other 30 minute time frame charts and show you that we don't have synergy. So we would not be looking for something like this. When I say something like this, it's gonna be these charts as soon as I can get there, uh, this right here. So here in the lower left, in the lower upper right, you have the NQ with the TD9 count bottom. Now, this is before this very moment in time. On the left-hand side, the, so here's what you would, you would be looking for. You'd be looking for bottoming patterns for all three or at least three of the four. Well, the 30-minute ES is showing a rose momentum indicator signal. Now, it's only 11.22. That means in about seven and a half minutes, if we do get this bullish reversal candy, you'd have a confirmed rose momentum indicator bottom, 41.28 being a key level of resistance out there. Dan, I saw you went long, so you want to watch at 41.28 or 41.29 level. If price can clear that, then you're looking to move to 41.45 or 41.49 would be the real key level of resistance. That's where a counter trend move at the moment in time would end. That's because we don't have any other pro Profiles. If a new profile forms, different story. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it could also generate a bullish reversal candle. That too would generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Then price would go target 32,935. If price closed above that on a 30 minute basis, 33,015. And above that, 33,052. The Russell 2000, even though it doesn't show on my chart out here, this could actually, it needs to get up to that oscillator and change on about halfway into that big bar to the downside that you can see out there. If it does that, that will be what's referred to as a three river morning star pattern It will actually be a four river because there'll be four bars out there but that would qualify also as a bottom this is what you would be looking like so let's still go into the thought process that we're seeing unfold here right now live and stevie's calling it is a counter trend intraday rally out here just simply with regard to the patterns today that i share with you and teach uh, to you out here this is exactly what you'd be looking for if we get that move lower in the afternoon and the spot Volatilix has a one-day rate of change above plus 10%. If you saw this overnight, you would go ahead and you would take a long position. Of course, you'd want to understand where those different resistance levels are at. And that's, of course, always the beauty about utilizing your system or my system, a system, and just being consistent with it. And, and if you do that, then to see if you're able to come back and take a look at the play-by-play, -play, utilizing you know these or whatever intraday time frames it is that you guys actually ye, uh, uh, use. But VIX is back below 10%. No, I understand understand that Peter um, it's an end of day it's not uh, it's not uh, where we're at right now at 11:24 in the morning it is an end of day deal all I was doing was really just uh, uh, mr. bill had asked about that wanted me to like, basically go over that again and that's intention that's what what my intention was if I wasn't clear my apology about that but now what you do know is on those days exactly how you trade it exactly how you know sometimes you will see those intraday signals occur um, before the actual close so you just again you're looking you, you you know what to look for when you can see that rate of change is ab is going to be above 10 percent uh, coming into the end of the day so mr bill i hope that that helped you out and everybody else that was out there as uh, well uh, so we take a look at the 30-minute charts out there. Let's take a look at uh, a request. We've got two requests that have come in so far. Of course, I would love more. Oh, wait, before we do that, I take that back, guys. Before we do that, 
let, let's just continue on with this thought process of why we might say, hey, get this nice intraday counter trend rally and then a further move lower. It's the very first thing that I spotted that when I was up early this morning, and I mean early this morning, and that was uh, this. And I uh, see Mr. Z pointed that out inside the uh, Tiger said maybe others did as well. And that was that the DAX was forming a island top. An island top pattern. Now, what do you have in an island top? Well, you can see that the DAX here, make sure I'm on the right charts out there. Yeah, we had a nice gap to the upside back on May 18th. The low of that gap out there was down at 1606942. The high of today's session is at 16013. That creates this little island out there. Here, I can go ahead and actually draw it in. We'll go ahead and draw in the island. Now, this is not just your ordinary island top out here, this is a special island top. Why is it so special, Stevie? Well, if you take a look at the high, then uh, May 19th, that high out there was 16,331.94. That high was the all-time high. That was the all-time intraday high for the DAX, no matter how far back we might go out here. And that's kind of interesting. At an all-time high, you have an island top. You can't get more bearish with regard to candlestick patterns out there. And the NASDAQ Composite and the DAX tend to follow each other. Hmm, something to think about. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe. To Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
welcome back, folks. Let me uh, let me uh, finish my thoughts here. So we take a look at the DAX. DAX has got that island top. We know that it's an all-time high. If you look at the weekly chart, you're going to get a confirmed roads momentum indicator um, top to uh, uh, by. Fr it looks like you'll get that by Friday out here. You at least have that signal right now. And price below its oscillator and change line tells us that it's lost its way out there, and that opens up the door for the DAX to get down to 13,976. Now, in the case of the monthly time frame chart, you are in bar number eight. Uh, in order to get to bar number nine, that would mean next month you'd still need to see a close above bar number five out there. So I'm not going to worry about the monthly chart. It's made, you know, it's 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 a retest of a prior top out here. Um, you've got enough signals on the daily and the weekly. So I said earlier that I would be preparing for a two month pullback. Well, where the Sam heck did Stevie pull that out of, right? Well, again, it goes along with everything that I share with you each uh, each time we're here together at between 11 and 12 or sometimes between 8 and 9 in the morning out here. Here is the monthly chart now for the DAX. If we take a look at the DAX, this could be, in essence, we had a nice four-week rally to the upside. That's a pretty extended rally with regard to consecutive sessions higher. And then now, assuming that that island reversal is going to do what it should do, it should take hold and says we move lower. Well, what I would expect out here, as you can see, typically, as far as moves to the downside, they're typically two months. You can get more than two months. You can get two or three out there. But this is where Stevie is saying, you know what we're looking at out here? We're looking at a, a down, uh, a move lower in May and a move lower in June. That doesn't mean we can't find some type of bottoming pattern uh, in uh, June out there. And typically we do like around June 25th, 24th, 26th, somewhere right around there is where the typical seasonal uh, bottom uh, would come in. It takes up to July and then down in through the November time frame. So that's where that two month idea of a uh, correction comes. And it's all because of well, it's a combination of things, but now it's really because of what's going on inside the DAX. Oh, Stevie, come on. You can't make that decision about the U.S. market based on what's going on inside of Germany, can you? Well, you know, that's a pretty good point. Uh, however, what you and I can do is we can say, well, let's go investigate that. And here's the investigation charts. Now, what I've got up top is the NDX 100. I could change that to NASDAQ composite, but we're going to leave it at the NDX 100 because the NDX 100 is something you can trade. Now we take a look at it. What's below that is the DAX, and what's below that is the correlation chart. Now, I've changed this to a 10-day correlation. So this says, on average, over a period of 10 days, are both these instruments trading in the same direction? If they are, those bars are above zero. 90 Four percent of the bars. I don't know if it's 94 percent. I just pulled that one out of, you know, where Stevie pulled it out of. But 94 percent, some high percentage level of bars are above zero out there. And that says we've got a directional correlation. Well, if we've got a directional correlation and the DAX says, you know what, I'm going to move lower for the next couple months out here. Well, that's where it comes with regard to. Uh, the U.S. moving lower as well. And then on top of that, well, we are taking a look at the uh, NDX 100 here. The NDX 100, if we go take a look at its charts, what we're going to see here momentarily is that it formed a top yesterday. Just as the NQ did, as you and I were looking at it, here is the uh, NDX 100 chart. And you can see that yesterday was now that confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top, price of below the oscillator and change line. The cash indice is telling us once you get down to 13.059. Now, that would be the minimum of a move to the downside out there for the NDX 100. So that's what I see when I take a look at the markets overall. So I do hope that that helps you out. Let's get to our first request out here. That first request coming in from a guppy inside the Tigers. And let's take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA is a ticker symbol. Now there, whoops, that's not it. Let's, that's still the DAX. Let's pull up NVIDIA. Uh, did they come out with earnings already or they are coming out? I apologize. The message was uh, before and, and I forgot. But here's what I can share with you. Yesterday, NVIDIA confirmed a road momentum indicator top. So it did that, McGuppy, when you generated or when it generated that bearish reversal candle. Yes, it was a bearish sash candle. A bearish sash candle, by the way, doesn't need, it can form anywhere. It doesn't need to have a, a trend that's in place out there. But nonetheless, it's still a very important bearish or bullish reversal signal out here. So now what this tells us is NVIDIA, and it has a bullish structured profile that formed yesterday. It should pull back to test that bullish structured zone. And the zone out here, McGuppy, is between 284.24 and 288.02. If you see a close below 284.24, the signal there is moved to 233.60. That's what the daily chart is communicating to you and I. On a monthly base, or a weekly base, I should say, this is signaling to you and I that, okay, it doesn't have a top, 
But the uh, we'll say that the we'll say that the daily and the general indice may drive this, and so its first downside target would be 283.96. So this is beautiful. We got 284.24 as the bottom on the daily, around 283 and change on the uh, weekly oscillator and change line. So I'd say it's more likely the move would be to between 280 and 288.02. On the monthly basis, I'll call, although the month is not over, price is uh, giving you a nice signal out here with being uh, above its breakout level at 289.46. But I think you got to pay attention to the daily as we speak right now. On a 30-minute time frame, we were taking a look at the NQ, all the 30-minute equity future charts earlier. We saw either Rhodes Mint Indicator or TD9 count bottoms, is my recollection. Here in the case of NVIDIA, we've got a TD9 count bottom. So intercession right now, McGuppy, you should see a move up towards that 304-ish range out there. Uh, that's the oscillator on change line, uh, if the market is gonna behave like it uh, normally would with regard to these signal patterns out there. But overall, it looks to me like NVIDIA is ready to move lower and uh, go test that target area. That'd be between, again, 280 and 288. So I do hope that helps you out. And thanks so much, as always, for the request. Next request coming in from Roger. Roger wants to take a look at RF. And RF is, uh, what is RF? Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. It's trading at about 1739. I'm just going to confirm. No, it's really trading at 1744. So I'm having a little bit of a slight data feed issue on some of these instruments. But what we see here is price is above the top of its daily profile, above an oscillator and change line. No topping pattern that Stevie sees out here. So this should continue to move higher. The issue, Roger, that this has, and you were asking really about mid to long term, it's that midterm. Where did price find resistance? at that oscillator and change line. It's the entire reason that I developed that little tool out there. It's amazing, that tool. It's a great tool. You guys should really learn to use it if you don't already. So that's your real threshold level. That price is gonna need to clear. The daily is bullish, but the weekly is saying, hey, Roger, not so fast, or at least, uh, hey, RF, not so fast out there. Roger Federer. Hey, but that's why Roger likes that. Oh, I do like those, uh, uh, Roger, those, uh, those. of course, I'm a, a late adopter out there. I did buy a pair of those uh, on shoes uh, for walking, not not for running. For running, you got to, you know, I don't really think those are great running shoes, but boy, they are comfortable for sure when walking. But anyways, back to RF out here. Is there any additional information? There's not anything else that I see on this set of charts here that I can assist you with. Uh, so expect a, and now with regard to pullbacks out here, maybe I can find a little bit. With regard to pullbacks, uh, this would be day number one. It typically does a, a two bar move to the downside, two to four bar move to the downside. So I'd expect this to pull back uh, tomorrow as uh, well out here. And that is ticker symbol RF. So Raj, I hope that that helps you out. Thanks much for taking the time to make a request out there. The next request is gonna come from SNP wants to take a look at on semiconductor. We take a look at on semiconductor. Those are those on shoes out there too. Uh, how about that two in a row? How does that work? Well, I'll tell you how it works. Life is always happening for us. Not to us. When we take a look at On Semiconductor, it looks like it's happening to it this morning. It's trading down below the bottom of its daily profile. It's 79.29, but we'll confirm that when we get back to this break. that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking an on semiconductor. This is for SNP, and the uh, the B point of an A to B equals CD was uh, passed with uh, with big volume. Was passed with like 10 million shares, I believe, was on this trading day right here, May 16th or May 15th, uh, and that generated an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now it does not complete that pattern. That pattern wouldn't complete until you get up towards about the 9252 uh, level out there. Okay, so we know that. We don't have a top in place, but we do have a, certainly a sympathy trade here. This is pulled back for whatever reason. And right now, price is testing a key level of support. That is the bottom of that profile, 79.28. So if S&P price closes below that level out there, and this should be where price would find support, tells you we got it's got some problems. Uh, it's moving into what I had used as the B point, uh, the C point of the A to B equals CD with volume. This swing point here did volume of 4.7 million shares. We're at 4.1 million shares as, as we speak right now. So I don't think that A to B equals CD pattern is going to hold up, the one that we're looking at on the daily time frame. And if close, price closes below that profile level at 79.28, it says we're headed lower. Now, headed lower to where? Excellent question. We can see the weekly is sitting on the center of its profile. So it says if that area is defeated by the uh, sellers out there at 79.17, and we're at, what, 79.28 uh, on the uh, daily time frame. So we've got all the support here. If that level fails, then we're looking at 73.58. And 76.95 is another potential level on the monthly time frame, but I'd really be watching 73.58. So it looks to me like on semiconductor is headed further south. That would be confirmed with a close below the bottom of that daily profile. So SNP, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in as always. The next request out here coming in from Tim. And Tim wants to take a look at SWAB. S-W-A-V is the ticker symbol. Trading out at about $278.65. Really, it's $277.86 was the last printout here. What is this doing? It's got a road momentum indicator top that has led to a sideways-ish type move out here sideways ish if price closes below where's the low out here if price closes below 268.02 255.76 would be up on the uh, cards tim that's a td9 count breakout level the uh, weekly time frame has a td9 count top with price testing support and the support is right now testing its bullish structured support level that's between about oh 260.09 and uh 
269.69 and 260.09. That's its bullish structured area out here. So we know why. We take a look at the daily time frame. We're saying, why does price stop where it is down there? Well, right now we know that that is a very strong support level established uh, last week or this week uh, by that uh, center of that uh, bullish structured profile out here. So um, I think you just got really pretty much a consolidation out here, uh, Tim. There's not much else that I can really provide to you. So I do hope that helps you out. And thanks much for taking the time to write in. Vic writes in and Vic says, uh, climb Mount Sinai, where Moses got the Ten Commandments. You know, Vic, I actually looked into that. It turns out the Mount Sinai is quite a ways away from uh, Cairo, which is where we're really headed to. But I did look at that. However, when I did that search, you know, things happen for us, not to us. What popped up on the screen, I would love to do that, right? Uh, David always, David White, and it was a little bit, a little bit of polar because he always liked to talk about that burning bush out there. So I said, hey, why not? Why not go check that out? Well, it turns out that um, what the story of Moses, he was found in a river, I believe. And was it the Nile? I don't think I don't, must have been. Yeah, it had to be the Nile. It was the Nile, right? And um, so it turns out that the uh, so I, we're also going to go see the oldest uh, churches, um, temples, um, you know, the, the whole thing. I just want to experience all, all of history going back. There turns out that the temple or the synagogue, uh, the oldest one in, in all of Egypt, is really where Moses was taken out of the water. The Nile is not near that now, but they have historically they've gone back and they've taken a look at it, and um, uh, and they say that that's where the river had flowed. So kind of interesting. So really looking at uh, uh, going to enjoy uh, some tremendous history out there. But uh, your question was uh, you don't have a question. Uh, well, um, I'll, I'll and, and look, I'm going to record shows. Um, while I'm while I am uh, traveling, I'm going to do my best to do that. What I don't know is the internet issues that we've got and things of that sort. But but I do plan on doing um, a good a good number of shows while while I am a away and being able to report back to you what is it I'm seeing, seeing where. Well, seeing in in Egypt, seeing in Greece. I'll be in Santorini. I'll be in Athens. We'll be in the Amalfi Coast. We'll be in Florence. We'll be in uh, Venice. We'll be in Lake Como. So, you know, a bunch of different places out there. I can tell you, travel wise, it's packed. Um, I started booking this whole trip uh, three and a half, four months ago. Four months ago, when all this really started coming together. In any event, let's get to another question that, that has come in. And this one is from Alton. And Alden says, good morning, Steve. I'm kind of envious regarding your Mediterranean trip. Have a great time. Well, if you have time, can you please look at the GDX? Absolutely. So let's switch over. Take a look at the GDX out there. You're looking for an entry price. Now, in the case of the GDX, the problem is that we don't have any kind of a bottom signal. We just have an A to B equals CD to the downside, sort of. And the reason I say sort of is that because the B to C point would have to be this uh, May 12th to May 15th time frame. So as an example, I'm gonna do it on my other set of charts that it'll just take me a second to do that once these charts come up. I believe that retracement level is pretty narrow, but I'm just gonna check it out just to make sure. When I say narrow, I mean way less than a 0.382. Well, it's a 29% retracement out there. 29, I like to at least be a 0.382, but let's go with a 30%. Let's, let's just say that that is the A to B equals CD pattern. Well, then what we've done so far is we've attained the one-to-one -one level. The one-to-one -one level out here, Alton, would have been 3121. We're at 3119 as we speak right now. We're really at 3113. So 3074 is likely the next target. That's a TD9 count breakout area. If price closes below that, Alton, that says that we head lower. The next lower price would be 2834. So if we haven't been too gratuitous in giving that an A to B equals CD pattern, the answer to your question as to where is the buy point, it would be when a bullish reversal candle forms. So we're talking about a bullish hammer candle, the bullish, bullish engulfing candle, the bull sash, a gap to the upside, um, a bullish piercing uh, candle. Uh, what did I forget? A bull separating line. I think I've gotten them all in there. Those are what we would be looking for to confirm then that the GDX is bottom. Of course, what you'd like to also see is that gold and silver have also done the same thing. So I do hope that that helps you out, Alton. And uh, um, uh, and thanks for your kind comments about the uh, the little vacation. Uh, haven't been away since a uh, uh, trip to South Africa, really, since 2014. Yeah, I've taken a couple of days off here, you know, to go up to Nantucket, stuff like that. But nothing of any kind of a significance, not like this. So I think I have been through all the questions. 
out here. If there's something inside the tiger's den or if I've overlooked something, here we go. Uh, Dan says, Steve, how about a short-term Microsoft levels? So let's go take a look at Microsoft. We'll punch this in here, Microsoft, see what it is uh, doing. Um Yes, Roger, shoes are comfortable. Yeah, those those on shoes. So I, I, Roger, I got the I got the newer ones that were out there with the because I have got a little bit extra weight out there. Although on the weight side, most most people know I was on the uh, the cat food diet. I, I graduated over to the one meal a day program out there, and uh, yeah, the eleventh command for Mr. Bill: follow the oscillator and change line. And uh, in any event, we'll get back to this break. We'll take a look at uh, Microsoft, which uh, confirmed a uh, sell the deep point pattern yesterday. And you've got a new profile to deal with here, Dan. So we'll give you that new information as soon as we come back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're going to take a look at Microsoft here. Let me get that chart up on the uh, screen. So, Dan, the new profile levels, you can see the support area. It's pretty clear on my chart, 308.21. And that is likely where Microsoft is gunning for. Now, the reason that I say that, Dan, is because it's a bullish structured profile and prices below the center of that profile that formed yesterday. So the top is at 319.50. The center is at 317.88. My experience is that when you close below the center of a bearish structured profile, I said bullish, I think, uh, bearish structured profile, uh, you will typically 
probably make its way down to support. Now, if price were to close below 308.21, then the next area it's price would be it's become its price target is 270.205. That's on the daily chart. On the uh, weekly, you've got a confirmed TD nine count top. You also are in wave number seven. Of course, that can't be confirmed until next month out there. But the TD nine count top has taken hold. That suggests where price wants to head to is 296.61. So we got 296.61 and 308.21 as targets on a monthly time frame. Prices run right up into resistance. The TD nine count breakdown area out there. So Dan, I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Microsoft. And thanks so much for the request. Uh, the next request inside the Tigers Den was to take a look at. Um, Oh, uh, 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, sure. Uh, sorry. Let's go back up here. We take a look at Microsoft on a 30-minute time frame. What do we have here? We have a, you don't have anything just yet. If Microsoft, by 12.30, can spike below 312.65, you would then have a TD9 count bottom. Um, if it doesn't do that by 12.30, I don't, I don't have any kind of a pattern out here to speak of uh, Dan price and below profile on the oscillator and change line. That would be a key level of resistance, 315.48 out there. All right, the last request. Let's get to it out here. I don't even remember what it was, but it was um, ABBV. So what do we have here? You've got a, you still have a TD9 count bottom, price testing support. That's the bottom of its profile. That's out at 142.20. Uh, price has uh, just consolidated with inside its profile after forming that TD9 count bottom. The weekly price pulled back to TD9 count breakout support at 142.10. So only if that daily pattern fails. And the way that pattern would fail would be a close below 140.52. Would you be in real trouble? You're at support on the monthly time frame as well. So you're back at support on ABBV. Will it hold? I don't know. But I will see you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. I'll see you on Fantastic Friday. I want you to have a wonderful Wednesday. Take care, folks.